Hello, and thank you for listening to libertarianprogressive.com and blogtalkradio.com forward slash election channel. And we interview independent and third-party candidates who are on the ballots and the only third-party option in their district in, for the year 2016. And we're talking about the elections that are coming up for November 8, 2016. And today we have an interview with Jim Higgins, who's a libertarian in U.S. House District Number 2 in Missouri. And let's go ahead and bring him in. And if you want to learn more about Jim, it's Jim Higgins 4. That's the numeric 4 congress.com jim higgins for congress.com and jim welcome to the show how are you doing this evening i'm doing good thank you all right well it's good to have you here today and um, we want to let people know their options that there isn't just a republican and democrats that all across the country and we're showing examples of 50 plus people uh you know that could possibly be um in your district uh and are running for the House. So let's go into the issues here on your website. Um, you do have an issues list. Uh, actually, it's called Solutions, Economic Issues, Civil Issues, Social Issues. And um, so good, healthy amount of issues there. Uh, you know, everyone says it's about the economy, so maybe we should start with that. Um, everything from farm freedom, minimum wage, social security, government spending, jobs, and un- unemployment. Um, what do you think the state of our economic state of the union is? And, you know, what would you bring to the table to uh, propose to be some solutions to remedy that? Well, we have uh, two, two things or, I don't know, three things going on. We've, we've got all these um, programs that uh, essentially are uh, distribution of wealth, and it transfers uh, uh, wealth, uh, punishes people for being productive and uh, being uh, behaving responsibly and saving their money. Uh, it there's a disincentive for all of that. Uh, then, w- then we've got uh, the. Uh, crony capitalism, where the people that are politically connected uh, get special favors uh, from politicians because politicians have the power to dispense uh, favors. And uh, so that gives the impression to the general public that things are rigged, that things are unfair. Uh, again, uh, discourages productivity and uh, distorts the free market. Uh, you know, people with good ideas and good customer service are at a disadvantage uh, when crony capitalism uh, happens. And then we've got uh, a, uh, an army of bureaucrats enforcing ridiculous regulations that that basically smother economic activity. And so. We wonder, you know, why why don't we have uh, uh, a, a booming economy like we like we did maybe 30, 40 years ago? Is because, you know, we've got because of all these things, um, you know, and and government growth is the is the you know bottom line of all of this. And it sounds like what you're saying is, if I had a garden and I collected heirloom seeds, and if I just collected the worst. The, the seeds from the worst plants every year in 10 years, I mean, what's my garden going to look like? Usually they try to collect the biggest, you know, most fruitful ones, and, and, and they advertise it as, as a good thing, but we're rewarding the people who fail and bail them out at the people who, um, you know, didn't need the bailouts. And so, uh, now, let's. what about uh, civil issues? That's another thing that's important. You have here health care, education, civil liberties, gun ownership, and the environment. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, which one do you want to take? Uh, you know, uh, gun ownership. I mean, I think I, th- uh, I think we're uh, they keep trying to re- regulate guns or restrict guns, um, and uh, they think that uh, guns are the problem, but uh, it's not really. The cities, the cities like Chicago, and that have banned guns still still have a high crime problem uh 
and uh, and states that are kind of um, you know uh, lax about not lax but uh, more willing to allow you know give people responsibility for gun ownership. I mean the the crime rate is either the same or has dropped in those states. So so we're, we're kind of uh, I think the evidence is you know is in favor of gun ownership. I mean we have we have mass shootings here and there, but we've always had mass shootings. Um and and the guns are not the problem. It's you know mentally ill people. And then on uh, civil liberties, uh, you know, the war on drugs, uh, we've lost that battle. We've tried, I don't know, 30, 30 40 years to restrict gun, uh, restrict drug use, and, and drug use is as big as it ever has. And we've, we have, um, uh, our populations are overpopulated, our prisons are overpopulated with uh, nonviolent uh drug offense and they we put them in for a couple of years uh, you know they go into prison as a non non-violent drug offender and they and uh, they come out as hardened criminals so uh, that's not doing anybody any good uh it's not making us safer and it's not and it's ruining you know the lives of uh some of our young people that are disadvantaged so yes uh, we got we have to we have to come to our senses about uh, legalizing uh, drugs, especially marijuana. Yeah, and if you take it as a holistic approach, I wonder by ending the drug war, if actually you would see a decline in, you, you know, gun crime or crimes uh, in general as a whole, um, you know, violent crimes. What about the environment? Uh, you know, what are what would what's your approach to the environment? Well, libertarians are, uh, that's one area where libertarians have, um, you know, debate about. Uh, you know, I grew up in, in Cleveland, and uh, I, I live in St. Louis now, but I grew up in the Cleveland area, and uh, we had the infamous uh, bridge, Cuyahoga River, caught on fire, I think it was, in, I don't know, in the 70s sometime. And uh, and uh, the the Cuyahoga River at that time uh, was heavily polluted with uh, oil and chemicals from industrial industrial waste just was dumped into the river and and Lake Erie was a mess. They actually closed down a couple beaches. So uh, you know libertarians think there might be different ways to handle that, but. I, I, my opinion is that there, there is a role for the EPA to keep the air and the water clean. Uh, that um, you know the air belongs to everybody and the water basically belongs to everybody. So there, I, I concede that there is a function for the EPA, uh, and they did a good job of cleaning up you know, the water in the 70s and everything, but they, they've gone overboard uh, lately uh, in the last 10 years or so, uh, violating the rights of uh, private citizens and trying to regulate small streams and things like that. So, um, but there might, there might, I think there is a role for government to um, try to, uh, maintain uh you know a good a healthy environment for everybody yeah i think a lot of libertarians would agree with you on there i mean you're an individual um at at the foremost and uh you know so there's um everyone's an individual ultimately and and not everyone can be painted with a broad brush stroke so i appreciate uh you know your approach on that and um what about health care and education uh wow education good gosh um you know the um everybody just assumes that uh we need to have public education that that uh, every, you know that everybody needs to be uh educated and even and then uh, I, I even thomas even uh thomas jefferson uh 
be- believed that uh, there should be some support for public education, but it hasn't. It hasn't really worked. I mean, uh, people are now starting to realize that uh, the public schools are responsible for a mediocre performance. Uh, there's um, we're behind, we're falling behind in Asian countries and even some European countries. And uh, the reason is because, again, it's incentives that uh, the, the public school administrators um, get our tax money uh, regardless of performance. So they, they have, there's no incentive for them to improve education or, or provide or, or uh, innovate. Um, you know, all all of our in the, in the free market, all, all all other aspects of our free of our private life have improved. We've got the internet and cell phones and and uh, you know uh, thin screen TVs and everything because of competition, which brings about competition brings about innovation. In education, we don't have that. They, if for a hundred, you know, a hundred years ago, the teacher would stand up in front of the class, and the and the and the kids would sit and listen. Oh, well, they're doing the same thing now. They might, you know, they they haven't really changed, you know, haven't changed the model at all uh, because they don't have to. So uh, that's one of my pet peeves: is the education system is that uh, we should uh, at least try vouchers and and or tax credits, I, I, I don't care which one you do, but allow uh, parents to use their tax dollars for to send their children uh, to the school of their choice, whether it be tutoring or homeschooling or parochial schools or private schools. You know, let, let, that, let the parents be in charge of... Um, you know how their education tax dollars are spent, and then uh, you know that that would bring about competition. I think that would go a long way towards uh, improving our education system. Uh, uh, and and our children are learning all about the government in government schools. So what's wrong with this picture? They they no no wonder we have a perception problem. You know with freedom because. They get fed all this uh, stuff in school about how you know how wonderful government is, and they and they and and they're at a at a vulnerable age or a, or a, an age where they where their brains can be uh, influenced by that sort of thing. So we have we have a hard uh, we have a hard uh, road to try to sell liberty because. You know, people have been, you know, uh, influenced by their teachers in public schools. So that's one of my pet peeves right there is uh, the public education system. I, I, I think we've got to make some big changes there. Yeah, I think people should be open-minded to hearing all ideas, I mean, at least listening to ideas. And I think it's something like, on average, the country per pupil spends about $10,000 or, or something very close to that per student. I mean, if you think about it, if you just gave that right to the student, I mean, you could get five students together to pay a really high quality teacher $50,000, or you could get 10 people to pool together and pay someone $100,000 a year and, and on and on. And with the marketplace, I'm sure you would get tons of innovative types of education. I mean, all different varieties. And um, there's some very, very good examples of that. And uh, so, um, and that's just one way of looking at it. So let's jump into social issues here. Um, I mean, I think you did touch on the war on drugs a little bit, but what about immigration, marriage equality, lower the drinking age? Oh, um, well, I'm I'm not sure. I, I, I'm not sure about the drinking age. I, yeah, I when I grew up, uh, we were. We were allowed to have three two beer when we turned eighteen. I'm, I'm, I don't even know what the laws are now. I, th- I, th- I think it's all everything is twenty one, but uh, that we handled that okay. I think that you know okay. uh, 
So I, I don't think there's a problem with, with lowering All the right. drinking age. All if right, we'll you skip can, that one. You, okay, if you can vote or if you can fight, you should be able to drink. Uh, yeah. What was what was the other ones? Yeah, and that's a good principle, actually. I mean, it, it's, you know, if you can fight, um, you, you know, and go to war, then, I mean, I understand the principle of that. Marriage equality and immigration. Oh, immigration. Yeah, I think... Uh, Immigration, there's a, you know, I I just kind of cringe when I hear Donald Trump uh, talk about building walls uh, and 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 outlawing, uh, you know, limiting Muslims coming into this country. Uh, there should be a free movement of people. I mean, just because we were born here in the United States doesn't mean that uh, we have a, a lock on uh, what the United States has to offer. I mean, we're all immigrants, uh, and, uh, unless we, unless you were native born, and even the, even, even them migrated, uh, you know, ten thousand years ago or something. So, but people should be allowed to. F- that's part of freedom is that movement, and uh, if if they can come here and. Make a better life for themselves, and and uh, not, you know, if they cause if they if they commit crimes or or cause problems, uh, then of course, yeah, convict them, send, give them give them a trial and convict them and send them back. But most of the people that try to immigrate here are just you know decent honest people trying to make a better living for themselves and there there's absolutely no reason why why we can't let them in uh, you know my parents were my ancestors were irish uh and you know they were considered uh, you, know, you know disreputable people when they when they immigrated here but you know uh irish irish people are are respectable citizens of society now, so you know they can. You know, I, I don't. I, I I just don't think we should try to restrict immigration and and let people uh, flow. Uh, you know between between country borders. All right, and um, very well said, Ed. And so let's go into. I have a list of questions here or a list of topics I can might be feel inspired to answer them any way you choose. Uh, different people might hear a topic and go in one direction or, or another. And so how about um, if I said accountability and transparency, um, what would you bring to the table or what would you bring to uh, Congress as far as accountability and transparency goes, Jim? Well, yeah, if you're representing the people, I mean, that that's kind of a that, – I, that's kind of a no-brainer. I mean, I, if I if I got elected, I would, you know, I would be transparent. I would be upfront with everybody, and um, I might I might you know I might be uh, I might be voted out at the end of the term, but at least I'll be upfront with them. I mean, uh, this idea that uh, you can try to hide things from the voters. First of all, that caught, that's that's the one of the main reasons why we have distrust with government is because we we just simply don't know what to believe when when a politician tells us something we just simply don't know whether to believe them or not and so uh, the you know the the obvious thing, and it's easier said than done. But the obvious thing is to be transparent and be upfront with the American people. And if 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 they can't handle that, then uh, I guess we will get voted out. But you know, that, that's a that's number that's number one thing to do. Yeah, I guess accountability ultimately is at the you know the ballot booth, and I it's it's a very used statement. Everyone promises to be accountable and transparent, but. You know, like Obama did, but there's been a, a record number of FOIA requests not approved, and 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 so on. And so, what about um, election reform? Do you think um, there needs to be election reform at all, or do you think the system is pretty good the way it is? Yeah, I'm not sure how much uh, fraud there is. There's um, obviously some. 
uh, and it might be in, unintentional. I mean, the the um, the records are very hard to uh, maintain. The records, the list of uh, registered voters in a certain county or whatever, because you know people move and people pass away and stuff. So it it's 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 hard to keep track of. But I think outright fraud. I'm I'm not sure if that's a big problem or not, and um, you know, trying to restrict people from voting. Uh, you know, some sometimes these things, the, the election reform gets carried too far, where you restrict uh, or try to limit people from voting, and that's not a good idea. So uh, I don't know. I, Again, it's government run, so you don't you can't expect <laughs> so you can't expect uh, you know a lot of competency there. But I think uh, I don't I don't I don't I don't have any ideas as far as how to improve the situation, other than the way it's, the way they're doing it now. Um, I've dealt with the Secretary of State uh, in uh, in Jefferson City in Missouri, and I've dealt with our county election board. And they seem to be pretty, I mean, on a one-to-one basis, they seem to be um, pretty upfront with you and, and uh, respectful of, of you. And, and you know, they, they tr- they're trying to do a good job. So I, I, I guess I don't have any complaints in that area. All right. All right. And what about um, small and, and mid-sized businesses? Uh, there's actually been, I've seen a, a statistic the other day or, or kind of a bar graph chart where um, actually it's like a graph chart where the number of new small businesses opening up over the last, I think, about 25 years or so, it is in a steady decline. And, um, you know, and I, I don't think that's a good thing. Uh, do you think, um, you know, what, what, what do you think about the importance of small, mid-sized businesses? And is there anything that we might be able to do to change that trend? Well, they they are important. I mean, you, you know, most of the big businesses were small at one time, and we we need to allow people to you know try uh, to you know if they have an idea or, or uh, for a product or a service, they we should uh, encourage them to uh, try to you know carry that through or follow through on it. Whereas these days it's just it's just simply uh, downright scary to start a business. I mean, if you have more than 50 employees, then you get slapped with all these um, regulations and bathroom facilities and what how you know the the ratio of uh, ethnic, ethnicity and the ratio of gender and um, you know all kinds of things that open you up to regulation or liability it's just downright scary and it's it's and and it's wrong it's discouraging people and and uh so yeah small businesses is kind of like uh, the you know the it goes back to the vitality of the government you know um i think obama at one point ask businesses you know why they're not hiring or why you know why why things and uh, it's because of the uncertainty uh, we we don't know what regulation is going to be coming down the pike and, and so you get you, if you have an established business or you, or you try to start up a business well the rules might change on you and uh, so people sometimes a lot of times don't even try so yeah that's that's you know, really kind of sad. Yeah, yeah, they just put it on the back burner. And, um, well, wh- what about um, our trade policies or trade deals? Uh, what would be your approach regarding uh, trade with other countries? Well, yeah, um, yeah the, uh, you know, we live in a, we live in a world economy. Um, we have to have trade with other countries. Uh, the the un, the unfortunate thing with a lot of these trade deals is they're not really free trade, uh, they're managed trade, and uh, so you know the, it dictates you know who you can 
who you can trade with sometimes and how you can trade um and uh, sometimes even props up uh, you know dictators or existing existing corrupt governments so we should have free trade but it it shouldn't be that complicated um, i mean uh you know we don't need a lot of we don't need we don't we need don't need tariffs we don't need um restrictions or we don't need quotas uh just simply uh you know, free free trade. You know, you don't need a 500, 600 page document to to have a trade treaty. It just, you know, it's it's very simple. Just have you know, just open up free trade, and um, you know, maybe maybe we'll maybe we'll get uh, products cheaper from Asian countries and stuff. But uh, so what's so bad about that? I mean the. Uh, you know the consumers will benefit uh maybe a lot of some of the businesses will go overseas but consumers will benefit from cheaper products and and that's what trade is all about it 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 balances out it it has a, an effect to balance out you know where uh the efficiency is and where the economy is uh so free trade works uh in, within within the, our borders and outside of our borders, uh, free trade is good. So, yeah, I'd be for it, but I'm not. But I'm not for managed trade, like uh, some of these uh, some of these um, treaties are. Right, right. And now, um, what about? Uh, let me ask you this: um, Who are some of your favorite past or present people, um, elected or not? Um, Pat, how far back? <laughs> uh, uh, as far back as you want. Well, I think uh, I I don't know. I, if Gerald, I kind of I kind of like Gerald Ford. Uh, he got a bum rap. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if you're old enough to remember Gerald Ford or not, but I am. Sure. And um, you know, he got a bum rap for pardoning Nixon, and uh, and I think he he tripped on the stairs and he you know got labeled as clumsy or something but but he actually vetoed a lot of bills you know, there was a, at that time uh there was you know there was a lot of uh spending bills and you know, coming up to him the 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 liberal agenda hit kind of hit hit the high point in the 60s everybody thought government could solve all these social problems and actually believe they could in the 60s and that's the belief in that has kind of gone down since then but uh they they were passing all these spending bills to uh war on poverty and all this other stuff and 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 Ford um vetoed a lot of those things so i i kind of respect him for that and and then uh surprisingly um Bill Clinton, uh, he he got he recognized uh, in midterm that uh, you know he got the Democrats lost a lot of seats. I think the Republican, my, if my history is right, I think the Republicans took back Congress in '94 or something, and Clinton uh, recognized, and he actually declared that the era of big government is over with at that time, which which uh, didn't turn out to be true but he he kind of got the message then and uh so he 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 adjusted uh he's 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 a smart man and uh, he he adjusted and he he actually um kind of went along that was the only the only time uh, in the if you look at the budget and the spending over the last uh, 40 years or something it's just a straight line it doesn't matter Who's president or who's who's in control of Congress? It just keeps rising the same rate as it always does, except when uh, Bill Clinton was president, and he we had a Democratic president and we had a Republican Congress, so uh, spending actually you know actually tapered off, and we ended up with a balance, close to a balanced budget. It really wasn't a balanced budget, but it was close. And uh, so Bill Clinton adjusted, and and he, you know, he 
cut back on spending and things like that. So despite of all his sexual stuff and everything, um, I, I, I kind of think he was one of the better presidents of the last, uh, you know, in recently. Sure. And actually, I was looking at some graphs the other day. Um, I noticed the exact same thing. I mean, it's uh, exponentially just r- rising uh, almost to like a straight line, except in the 1990s when Bill Clinton was president, it kind of did go down and then immediately went back up with George W. Bush. Um, right. So, uh, yeah, that's something to notice there. Um, so what about some events in your area? Do you have any debates upcoming uh, and other events? Uh Yes, I do. Uh, the well, I I retired last year, so that gives me a lot of, a more of an opportunity to go. But I um, the uh, Chamber of Commerce um, in different cities uh, usually has um, luncheons, you know, in the middle uh, during the week in the in the middle of the day, and I. And uh, when I was working, it was it was difficult for me to attend those, but now I can. And um, I went to one last week, and I was I was the only libertarian there. But uh, I got a I, I, I got up and was you know able to talk for three minutes like everybody else, and uh, I got a I got a pretty good applause. I thought I I so and uh, so that was pretty good. And then I've got another. Um, forum again with the Chamber of Commerce coming up um, October 5th Uh, and then the League of Women Voters is trying to organize a uh, forum where uh, you know all all three of us will be there uh, at a community college and the Democrat has accepted and uh, Ann Wagner who's our who's our incumbent uh, Republican uh, representative, um, we haven't heard from her, so I'm not sure if she'll, she will attend or not. I mean, uh, we're, we're, we're in a, uh, well, the, the district has been gerrymandered so badly that, that um, she's in a heavily uh, Republican, we're in a heavily Republican district. And again, she doesn't really have to try. She's going to, she's, she's going to get elected. So she doesn't have to, you know, show up at the forum and uh, give me or the Democrat exposure. But, but the 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 debate is going to go on uh, with me and the Democrat there for sure. Uh, and maybe Ann Wagner will show up, and probably not. But uh, we'll we'll see how that goes. I hear what you're saying, Jim, and um, what I'm hoping someday, and it might not be this year, and and who knows, but uh, is that eventually the third party candidate, especially in a district like yours where you're the only third option is that you'll just be able to pretty much ride the wave. I mean, because I mean, I have seen some polls recently and they've been this way for a while that, you know, if the American people had a choice, they would throw them all out. And, um, and a lot of them don't know until the day they get to the uh, ballot that uh, there was a third option. So at least in your district and, and many other districts across this country, there are people who are running or putting themselves out there to be a servant uh, for at least two years. Um, you know, and if people don't like you after two years, they can vote, you know, the status quo back in. But, uh, well, we do thank you so much for uh, participating. And, um, and uh, you know, I admire anyone who gets uh, what they need to do to get on the ballots and to, to try to participate in the system and uh, to give the voters another option and to, you know, participate in the debates. And so, uh, Jim, good to talk to you. It's, it's uh, Jim Higgins, the number four congress.com. And any last words, Jim, before we go? And we appreciate your time today very much. Um, just that, uh, it's not a wasted vote if you, you know, voting for a third party, uh, for especially for libertarians, is not wasted. Uh, you know, if you if you want things to continue the way uh, the way they are, uh, if, if you vote for the two major parties, things are just going to con- continue the way they are. If you want things to change, you have to vote for a third party. 
Yeah, I mean, if we want that, you know, accountability and transparency, I mean, no one's the incumbent's not going to do it for you, and no one else is going to do it for you. I mean, you know, you have to be the change that you want. And um, well, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for uh, taking the time this evening, Jim. And uh, good luck in your campaign. We appreciate it, sir. Okay, thank you. All right, talk Thanks, to you later. Mm-hmm. All right, take care.